If you haven't done so yet, pause the video, reread the question, and give the solution an attempt before listening on. What we will do first is choose our system to be this man right here, and we're going to draw a free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on the man. So we'll represent the man as a little dot, and then of course we have the gravitational force pulling down on the man. We're going to label that mg. We'll be a little specific. We'll do m with a subscript m for the mass of the man times g. And then we have an upward force, which would be the tension in the rope that's wrapped around the pulley. So we'll call that T. Now, the question notes that he is lowering himself. So what we're going to do is assign a positive direction to the downward direction, and then we will make the upward direction negative. Now, with that convention in mind, we can apply Newton's second law. We know that the sum of the forces in the y direction would equal the mass of the man multiplied by the man's acceleration. So we then have, for the sum of the forces, the positive gravitational force, so that would be positive m sub m times g, and then the negative tension force, so minus t. And this would equal the mass times the acceleration. That's great. Now we're going to go over and look at a different system. We'll return to this equation in just a moment. But another system that we can analyze would be, of course, the sandbag right here. So it's the same idea. We'll represent the sandbag as a dot. Now the sandbag is going to be traveling in an upward direction, of course, since the man is going down. So the sandbag is going up, and we can assign the upward direction positive for the sandbag and the downward direction negative. And we'll draw the forces now. We have the gravitational force acting on the sandbag. That would be the mass of the sandbag multiplied by g. And then we have the upward tension force. Notice that the tension force is going to be the same because the man and the sandbag are connected by just this single rope wrapped around the pulley. So we don't need to use a different symbol for the tension. We just need to use T for tension. Okay, so now after drawing the free body diagram, we will again apply Newton's second law. Sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal the mass of the sandbag times the acceleration. So here we have the positive tension force minus the gravitational force, so mg, and then this is equal to the mass of the sandbag times the acceleration. Another thing to notice, just like the tensions are the same in each equation, the accelerations are going to be the same as well, because the sandbag and the man are connected by that one rope. So they're accelerating as a system, basically. So whatever the acceleration of the sandbag would be equal to the acceleration of the man. So this is great. What we're going to do now is a little algebraic maneuver. We're going to stack these two equations on top of each other. And then what we will do is add the equations together. Now there is a distinct advantage to adding the equations together. If you look carefully, when we add, we're going to end up adding a negative t to a positive t, which will equal zero. So in essence, these tensions cancel out. They go to zero. And then on the left-hand side, what we are left with is the mass of the man times g minus the mass of the sandbag times g. Notice it's a minus because of the minus sign we had previously put into the equation. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to have the mass of the man times the acceleration plus the mass of the sandbag times the acceleration. Now we can clean this equation up a little bit by noticing common factors. So for example, we have g in each term on the right-hand side. So we can factor out g. This leaves us with the mass of the man minus the mass of the sandbag. On the right-hand side, we have a common factor of acceleration a. So we're going to factor that out as well. Next, we're going to solve this for the acceleration. And of course, to do that, we can simply divide both sides by the mass of the man plus the mass of the sandbag. Doing so cancels that term out on the right-hand side, and now we have the following expression. Now this expression is very useful to us because it's going to allow us to calculate the acceleration of the man as he descends downward. So we'll plug in the known values. Of course, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We have the mass of the man, which was 85 kilograms, and the mass of the sandbag, which was 65 kilograms. And when you solve this, you will get an acceleration of approximately 1.31 meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration of the man as he accelerates downward. And what we're now going to do is go back and revisit what we were actually trying to solve. We were trying to figure out 
Where is it? There it is. With what speed does the man hit the ground? Well, he started at a height of 10 meters, and he also started from rest. So let's take that information into account. Notice that because the man started from rest, his initial velocity was zero meters per second. Now we go back to an earlier chapter when you learned about kinematics, and we consider the following equation. We have final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement. Now because the initial velocity is zero, we can actually knock this term out here, and then we're gonna be able to solve quite easily for that final speed. And we can do that by taking the square root of both sides of this equation. And then at this point, we would just plug in the known values. So the acceleration was determined a moment ago, about 1.31 meters per second squared, and then delta y was 10 meters. And you pick up your calculator, punch that in, you'll get a final speed of approximately 5.1, and this will be meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.